Okay, here we are getting ready to make an air dryer system for my compressor. Um, I live here in Florida, very, very hot and humid, and it's been really bad lately. A lot of moisture in the compressor lines. I had multiple separators, and I already have a two-stage compressor. I have this Harbor Freight two-stage, which, you know, generally runs good. Just It's been so humid, the water consumption has been... Or, or the water filling of it. Let's see. I have an automatic drain valve on the base of it that goes off I think every 45 minutes. And then I have another big water separator here that I just have into a jar with a sponge that every now and then I just blast it into there. But we need some help. So let me show you what I'm buying first or what I bought and we'll go on from there. On Amazon I got this um, it's like a transmission cooler. It uses 8AN fittings. And I also bought the mounting kit for it, which basically is like heavy-duty tie wraps. Let's see if I can get a shot of it here for you. They're basically like heavy-duty tie wraps with round bases. And they come with some little pads. And you can then mount it to anything, pretty much. Now, the pads that they give you were kind of thin. So I made some more pads out of like, it's like craft foam. Um, same stuff I use when I'm restoring the ATVs that I use where it needed around the battery and really, really cheap. I think I bought this stuff at Michael's. Um, it's always worked great for me with the ATVs, no problems. So first thing I did was mount the, the transmission cooler to the back of the compressor. And now I'll give you an idea of everything I'm going to be using. Um, I've seen a lot of videos about all kinds of stuff and I really didn't want to go across my whole wall with copper pipe. So I'm trying this out. This is, for those of you familiar with stills and moonshine and beer and wine, this is a chiller coil like used in a still. Um, I bought it on eBay. I couldn't have bought the copper and the fittings and then bent it myself for what I paid. I think I paid 80 bucks for this shipped to my door on eBay. Uh, the shipping label was still in the box. It was $28 to ship it to me. So for 80 bucks, the copper would have cost me 40 or $50 by itself, plus the fittings. Then I would have had to bend it. Um, so it was definitely worth it. Now, it came with um, hose fittings already on it. And once you unscrew the hose fittings, you're left with a half-inch um, pipe thread. So it was great for using these adapters, which go from half inch to 8AN. So they'll, they'll accept the hose. So that is going to sit inside this bucket that I got at Walmart. Again, cheap. I think it was three bucks and the lid was like a dollar or two. So that's going to sit in the bucket. The bucket will be filled with water. I've already drilled the holes for the um, copper tubing to come up through it. Um, let's see, I've got a half inch water separator. I've got some duct tape. I'm going to be using hydraulic thread sealant instead of Teflon tape on this one. Um, I've got a whole bunch of AN8 fittings as well as AN8 PTFE line. Uh, very, very high pressure, steel braided, and a few other brass fittings that I needed just to convert a few things on the input and output of the compressor so that I can go to the 8 AN fittings. So, um, because space is a premium here, I've built a small shelf onto the wall above the, the um, vacuum bucket on the sandblast cabinet. So that'll where the blue bucket will sit. And I'm going to start building it, cutting all my hoses and getting them together. And then I will um, come back and we'll show you how it looks and we'll take some temperature okay, here readings. Here we are back. It's all built, put together, and... Boy, am I lucky, not one leak. All right, so let me go over what I did. Um, coming out of the compressor, locally and online, I was having a hard time finding a um, 5 8 compression fitting to a half-inch pipe thread. So what I did was I just took a piece of half-inch copper pipe and a 5 8 um, compression fitting, and then I um, got a... Uh, slip on half inch to half inch pipe thread adapter and I just sweat it on 
and then I went into those Russell fittings that go from half inch to 8 an and then out it comes out and it goes into the coil that's in this bucket full of water this line gets pretty hot not as hot as up here up here is about 200 200 plus degrees once it gets down here it's like I don't know 140 180 um, it fluctuates and then it comes out of that coil it goes around to the top of the um, transmission cooler that's on the back out of the bottom of the transmission cooler into the water separator out of the water separator and into the tank through its check valve so that this is one of those automatic emptying water separators so when the compressor stops it decompresses all the air out of the charging area and it squirts the water out so I'm gonna have to make a little tube or something so that the water just doesn't squirt out everywhere I'm pretty impressed at the amount of water it's taking out um, it's taking out an incredible amount of water and I tried my my secondary water separ here that comes from the tank there was nothing in it even I have the automatic drain valve down here that goes outside and I hit the button on it and I went outside nothing completely dry the only water right now seems to be in here but once you start sandblasting for a long period of time or using the wet blast cabinet for a long period of time we'll see how it stands up and if moisture gets in the line if moisture gets in the line after this then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get one of those refrigerators like you get your kid for college a mini fridge or a small chest freezer and I'm gonna put this whole bucket in the refrigerator and cut some holes so that the lines come out of it and actually chill this because this is this seems to be where most of the heat comes into play so I will keep you guys updated on how this works right now it works fantastic I mean no no water in the lines at all I mean what I did was I just put the blow gun and put a tire wrap on it and just let it go and keep cycling and cycling and you know this kept spraying lots of water out of it but and like I said lucky on the first shot no leaks so I'm gonna do a parts list in the description for all the stuff that I used so that um, if you want to do this it'll be easy the only thing is it will all depend on your compressor what the output size is and what the input size is and that'll be the only place where yours might be different from mine other than that if you use all the same parts everything will be great and, and hopefully it'll match up on the input and output too again thanks for watching thanks for subscribing um, Get back to work with some more stuff. Thanks, guys. Bye.